Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. I apologize for recently using different narrators in my videos. This is because the narrator I usually use has become difficult to access. Whenever I find a suitable replacement, I always encounter minor shortcomings with that narrator. So, in essence, I ask for forgiveness for this issue. Hopefully, things will improve in the future. Anyway, as usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. One thing that really annoys me is this idealistic quest for a perfect society. Whether this quest comes from the ultra-religious, or from the maniacs heading up the New World Order, or even from average everyday folks, who think that humans can all be herded into some ideal group of nice neighborly Mr. Rogers types. Even if that could be done, it would be a bore. And any really serious effort to do so will quickly turn into totalitarian insanity. Isn't that what we are seeing now? Everyone has some crazy idea that they know how people should be in a good world. Some of these people are nuts, granted, and we all know who those are. But there really are some good-intentioned people doing pretty much the same thing. Human beings are messy. There really is no way you can get a bunch of them together, let alone 8 billion of them, and think you are not going to have criminals, crazy people, murderers, religious freaks, racists, misogynists, violent sociopaths, and all sorts of other shady shadowy folks amongst them. That's humanity for you. It takes all kinds. My fight for a better world doesn't mean a fight for perfection. The only real tenet that I believe is foundational is freedom, and more succinctly defined as freedom from tyranny. And of course, working toward maintaining, or developing, a keen awareness of who we are as spiritual and physical beings. But even that is mostly a pipe dream. However, I think it is worth working toward. Anything else is futile nonsense. To be human, we all possess a shadow side. Being physical always carries attention of the opposites. We live in a dynamic filled with paradoxes. There will always be clashes and conflicts. And as such, there will always be warriors to push the culture in one direction or the other. There will always be sides, and there will always be a cause to fight for. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. To claim oneself to be a champion of humanity is to claim humans have the right to be human. This includes all of the little and big oddities. It does not mean that humanity should not work toward a better human, but this even has limits. What makes a human better? I don't know if we can come up with an intellectual definition of better, which has been a huge part of our problem. The problem is that we keep thinking we can adequately define a better human. We must know in our hearts what is better. We already do know through consciousness of the heart. We also must know in our hearts and understanding that better is flexible and is more dependent on individual creativity than on a mass rigid consensus. We can say that God tells us what is better, and I do agree this is true, but I don't think he does so in words. I think he does this through his creation, in nature, in our hearts, and in the love we experience every day. He instills in us a willingness and desire to search out, in this sometimes barren land of physical manifestation, the better we can see in potential, emanating out of all of it, particularly out of the other humans we experience around us. Making the machine, the machine is, in part, the human body, better is not really the same. Trying to improve on God's creation, if inspired by God, can be a noble and a loving cause. But we see very little of that in our world today. Technological advances are inspired by greed for money and power, and very seldom inspired by love. 
love has become a secondary incentive in today's world. It no longer has the impetus it once had, maybe it never had all that much, but certainly more so than today. Love is now seen as a cruel joke by the powerful manipulators of our current apocalyptic world. Here is a quote I found recently by an author named Alili Bit, and the article it is taken from can be found at alilibit.com. The battle is not over land or resources, but over the essence of what makes us human, our ability to think, feel, and act freely. The elite's goal is disturbingly straightforward, to hollow out the individual, leaving an empty shell while stripping away the soul. This sums up the current battle for humanity. If we win this battle, what are we then left with? If some think it will be a purely Christian world governed by an authoritarian head of the church, then I suggest that is not really honoring the great varieties of human expression. If some think it will be a world of free human beings, free from global tyranny, and allowed to express and create within the confines of their own personal limitations, then they probably have a better idea of what humanity is all about. I am not saying it would be a world free of Christians, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, or Hindus, on the contrary. It will be a world where humans can partake in their own personal journey of discovery. And in my view, this discovery would be the discovery of God in the variety of ways humans define God. Is this vision also too rigid? I don't think so, because it leaves open to creativity the essence of human diversity. And in that diversity, all manner of expression will be found and expressed. Challenge and conflict is a mainstay of human existence. We need to allow humanity to continually express these challenges and conflicts and their potential solutions, but in a free environment. It is important that humans retain access to their souls and their innate sense of meaning and purpose. In this state of awareness, they can continue with their destiny. Unfortunately, this will be messy. There will always be a dark side to humanity. We are manifest beings living in a manifest world. It is impossible to live in that world without some darkness. That is the cost of being alive. So, the battle we are currently engaged in is not a battle to win a utopian way of life where everyone is the same and is always loving, always peaceful, and always perfect in all ways. It is a battle for humanity, just as humanity is, messy. A humanity where human beings can continue with God's plan, free of the shackles put upon us by others, free to express and to create, free to choose if they wish to have families, relationships, and communities on their own terms, and to benefit individually and communally from their efforts. Free to be individuals, unique, diverse, and creative. Free to be human. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.